right, so the title I have is Ruth. Ruth is part of the genealogy of Jesus. And the title specifically that I'm going to give you tonight is not imitating Ruth's heart. Well, then you're not seeking God. Not imitating Ruth's heart, then you're not seeking God. So first point is surrender in everything. And ask yourself, if not surrendered in everything, then are you not willing to give up everything? And if you're not willing to give up everything, again, it's a salvation issue, as it says in Luke 14, verse 33. And also, second point is loyalty. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, 1 through 4, it talks about what love is. And one of the links of what love is, is love is not self-seeking. Part of loyalty, in order to be truly loyal, we can't be self-seeking. Are you loyal and are you surrendered? So with this being said, with Ruth, her life was quite unlikely. Unlikely to become what she was in the genealogy of Jesus. Unlikely to get remarried. Unlikely to be able to heal a woman as well as she was broken herself. If we turn to Ruth... We're going to read the whole four chapters <laughs> throughout. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go there. So I'm going to get a head start. So Ruth, she was married to a guy, either Melon or Elkanon. But she was married to with, with one of them. And Oprah, her sister-in-law, was married to the other. Now, they married Moabite women. And if you know and you study out the history of it, it's not a good thing that they married Moabite women. This was the people they're not supposed to associate with. And they did it anyways. And my thesis is, my suspicion is like, maybe that's why her husband, Naomi's husband, and also her children were killed. Because they were men and they led them into sin. And if we read on, and if we see that also in verse 4, it says that um, as they married, married Moabite women, Naomi, um, Naomi got embittered because eventually her children were killed and her husband. And you have to think, if your husband got killed, your children got killed, and you're there in this land for 10 years, and you're like, what's going on? And you try to survive after. How would you deal with things? Would you... Rename yourself as well. In verse 8 of chapter 1, it says, Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-laws, Go back, each of you, to your own mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dear husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept out loud and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? I'm going to have, um, I'm, I'm not going to have any sons anymore. And who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to a son, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand had turned against me. And she persuaded one of them to leave. Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. What would you do? Verse 15, look said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you from me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. What would you do? Both of them stayed initially, but then after convincing, oh, it's going to be better, 
It's going to be better. Go back, go back, go back. She's like, okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> she was thinking logically instead of having spiritual lens. So despite Ruth being raised in an unspiritual home, she became spiritual. Getting the lectures and hearing how the culture is and, and growing in the customs of how Naomi and her family would do things. So she became a spiritual woman. However, one of them stayed and decided to be loyal to God and therefore Naomi. And in verse 20, uh, we see that, that Naomi said to her, it's like, when they went back to her homeland, she was embittered. She was like, my husband got taken away from me. My two kids got taken away from me. I'm stuck with this person, <laughs> Ruth. She's not letting me go. And I'm more agitated. I just want to be bitter. So she named herself Mar. And I'm like, okay. I thought my name meant bitter. <laughs> and it actually means sweet, you know? But have you been there? Have you been there? Where because of life circumstances, you're like, call me bitter. Call me angry. And you label yourself something that you're not actually. I am a, a lustful woman. I am a, a person who's prideful. I am not a surrendered woman. I am not a submissive woman. I am not fill in the blank. What have you renamed yourself because of your bitter some circumstances? You see, for myself, I renamed myself too many times. And instead of what God was telling me, I'm like, no, God, that is not who I am. I am not a gentle, quiet spirit. I am not humble. I'm not submissive. I am not a, a righteous woman. I am a woman who is ugly. I'm a woman who's been defeated. I'm worthless. I'm nothing. I'm pathetic. What do you tell yourself? And because of my bittersome circumstances of going through a divorce in the kingdom, of having a position of leadership and it got demolished, of having kingdom dreams to go to Greece and getting demolished, of having a home and getting no more, of having health conditions and never had health conditions before with no mental health problems. And now I'm like, what, how, how do I deal with this? I go into Rome, like, how do I deal with this? I'm scared. How do I deal with this? I get defeated over and over, how do I deal with this? And so I renamed myself and I was prideful and say, God, don't tell me who I am because I'm gonna tell myself who I am and I'm gonna believe Satan's lies. And where it got me was nowhere good. And that was what was going on with Naomi. But praise God, she had faithful woman with her, Ruth. And I'm grateful for the faithful Ruth and Naomi's in my life. That has helped me. I would say the two biggest ones is, is Michelle Williamson and Mary Jane Heard It. Yeah. <clears throat> and we see, we jump down to chapter three. <laughs> Verse two, it goes down, says, tonight he will be winnowing barely on the threshing floor, washing, wash and put on perfume and get dressed in your best clothes. Go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until, until you have finished, has, he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. What, she, what does she say? Um, do you want to get me killed? <laughs> Do you want me to get me stoned? Do you want people to look at me at I'm a prostitute or I'm some wayward woman? Do you want me to get raped? Verse 5. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. Verse 10. You have not run after young men, whether rich or poor, and now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask, and all the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although in 
It is true that I am a garden redeemer of the family. There is another who is more clo- who's a closely relative, more of a closely rel- relative than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he wants to do his duty as your garden redeemer, good. Let him redeem you. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie until the morning. So he didn't see her as some prostitute, wayward woman, or like stone her. Get out of my room. What are you doing? You're crazy. And I believe that could have happened if she didn't obey. And not only obey, but obey everything. Are we in partial obedience? Are we in somewhat obedience? Or are we in full obedience with our lives? And because of this, the, she had a happy ending. You know, she had a happily ever after. She was able to get married. She was able to, I want to presume she was able to have kids and all this kind of great stuff. Um, and she did. And so with that being said, for myself, I was like, I'm American. I'm American. <laughs> after I went through a divorce and separation, I'm like, okay, staying in the UK facing all of my trauma, all y'all know, all my business, you know? I was like, I kind of want to run. And I remember before I came out to Europe, God said, Naomi, you're called. I was like, no, <laughs> I'm going to fast God. I'm going to see, you know, I was being prideful. And um, I said, if you put peace in my heart, I know that you called me here and I'm going to stay here whether my relationship works out or not. And after I fasted, I was at peace, and right after I fast, I felt this weird sense of peace. And I was like, okay, you're calling me to all of Europe. So that means if I stay in my relationship or I don't, I'm here to stay. Because there's women that need this American to help them to get saved. And amen. I didn't know that it was going to end in a divorce. I thought maybe breakup, maybe an engagement. But in a divorce, I didn't know that that was going to happen. But I remember God whispering, Naomi, remember that vow? For better or for worse. Are you going to stay loyal? Point number two. Are you going to stay loyal to me? When it doesn't even make sense. Ruth, it didn't make sense. But are you going to stay loyal? Are you going to obey everything? And I decided to obey everything. And so when my Naomi, Mary Jane, (laughs) and Michelle Williamson told me some advice, I was like, ooh. Okay, ask this brother on a date. <laughs> um, I didn't want to. I was completely surrendered with being single for the rest of my life. I was completely surrendered just to help other women, elevate them, and do whatever God wants me to do. Help go on mission teams, start it up, and go somewhere else, t- start churches. And, and just, I don't know, whatever God wants to use me for. And, um, and he was like, Naomi, this person. And I was disobedient at first. I was running. But, but, there's a but, and this is a good but, but I surrendered and I decided to obey everything. And because of that, sisters, I'm dating. Yeah. And because of that, I was going to, Lord willing, plant Greece, but I think Italy has a better ring to it. And I like... I like hills and it's shaped as a hill. (laughs) So you know what? And there's more people to evangelize in Italy. (laughs) So you know what? I'm grateful. (laughs) So sisters, coming to a close, I just want to let you know, what is it again that you're not surrendered to? What is it that you're holding on to? Because if not, it's a salvation issue. I plead with you, if you're not... If you're not willing to give up everything, even willing to, sur- to go through trauma in every area of your life. I was like, God, everything but a divorce. Everything, anything. Yeah, I could get, go to the Middle East, North Korea, and get beheaded for you. But um, everything that happened, no thank you. And that was the very area that God tested me with. Are you still going to be loyal to me? If we don't choose to, you can wrestle. But if you don't choose to give God the glory then it is a salvation issue. It's a seeking God issue. So really, my challenge is, in conclusion, is simple. We do the seeking God study. And if you don't know what that is, please talk to the person who invites you because we would love to do the seeking God Bible study with you. Do the Bible study for yourself. And after doing the Bible study, really evaluate, where are you? 
Where are you not surrendered? Where are you not being loyal to God? Where are you not seeking God with your whole heart? Because I plead with you, if you don't, it is a salvation issue. And I don't want to see anybody not here, there, in heaven. Thank you so much, sisters, and to God be all the glory. Thank you.